Good morning, friends. This is Pastor Megan from Trinity Lutheran Church, and we're so glad that you're with us, even though we're sad to not be together in person. Um, in our attempt to keep as many people safe and to spread down, uh, slow down the spread of the virus and to model good behavior, um, we've limited our worship leadership this morning to myself and our accompanist, Trish. And I also asked Trish, since she was going to be here, to serve as a lector. So she did not get to wear her pajamas since she'll be on camera this morning. This will also be our last Facebook Live from the Sanctuary. Uh, Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter worship services will be planned in cooperation with the ELCA congregations from Ontario to Mountain Home. And you will see me and other worship leaders from the Trinity on video. And I'm very excited, actually, about what we're planning to do together. Our website is tvpraise.org. And it's already up and working, and you can find daily devotions there right now. I submitted one earlier this week. I also want you to know that the church office is closed. Bob Cola and I are working from home. Uh, we're taking turns checking the mail and answering machine. Uh, one note about our mail, if you're sending in checks, which we're so grateful that your generosity has continued during this time, uh, we only check the mail Monday through Thursday, and so the U.S. Postal Service does not even come by on Friday and Saturday. So if you've sent a check-in and you're wondering what's happened, um, that could be part of the answer. If you sent it late in the week, we might not get it until Monday. Our food pantry is still open and um, nothing has changed there except that people need to make an appointment because the office is closed. So we have a sign up on the outside of our, our, on our church doors explaining how that works. And finally, our church council will meet Monday, tomorrow night, via Zoom meeting, and we will send an email out to you on Tuesday or Wednesday. The email will include um, an updated directory, which we're really happy about, an invitation to our next coffee with the pastor on Zoom meeting, and in preparation for Palm Sunday, you will all get a palm to color. <laughs> so uh, look for that email. And if you're not getting our emails, send me a note or Bob Cola, and maybe we have your wrong address, and this would be a good time to fix that. So we're going to begin this morning with the confession and forgiveness. So if you have printed a bulletin, pull that out, and if you haven't, that's fine. Just listen along, and that's perfectly acceptable. So we begin remembering our baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering song is, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart, we'll sing verses 1, 3, and 5.
Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ, and serve you in righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel, chapter 37. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, Suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come down from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and to bring you up from your graves, O my people and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Please join me in reading Psalm 130 responsibly. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, in order that you may be feared. I wait for you, O Lord. My soul waits. In your word is my hope. My soul, My soul waits for the Lord more than, than those who keep watch for the morning, more than, more than those who keep watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love. With the Lord there is plenteous redemption. For the, for the Lord, Lord shall redeem Israel from, from all their sins. sins. Second reading is from Romans chapter 8. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is live because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, 
He who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also, also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you were here today, I would have you sit for this gospel reading because it's very long. <laughs> so, the Holy Gospel according to John chapter 11. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill, so the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has, not, has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to him, Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and said to her, told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, 
so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. So, we're going to do a very short children's message today. The last time that I was here in the sanctuary with our children, the first Sunday of the month, we looked out our windows and we talked about how the earth is coming alive with different colors during the springtime. And I have noticed um, during my time on Facebook and other social media and talking to friends that a lot of us, in addition to enjoying the colors that the natural world has brought into our life um, this month, have been spending some time coloring, either coloring um, sidewalks or coloring um, pieces of paper. So I've asked some parents to share the artwork that their kids have been working on. So parents, go ahead. This is the time to um, share that artwork in the comments. And I will even show you that I have been trying. <laughs> um, Illustrated Ministries has been providing free materials, so um, it takes a long time to color in the lines, let me tell you. Uh, but this is from today's psalm that Trish led us in, from Psalm 130. God, hear my voice. In God's word, I hope. So, I hope you enjoy all of the artwork and um, continue to have color come into our world. And everybody can um, participate next week because we'll have colored our palms for Palm Sunday. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I've always loved the story of the dry bones. Many of us, uh, including Trish when she walked in today, hearing today's reading from Ezekiel, that rich and vivid story about the Valley of Dry Bones, instantly remember the African-American spiritual them bones, them bones, them dry bones. There can be little wonder why it emerged out of the experience of African Americans in the southern United States. It welled up from the midst of a people trapped in that dark period of our history when slavery still prevailed. Whites stole the labor of captive Africans who, as slaves, mostly embraced the Christian religion of their masters. It's easy to understand why those who had, against their wills, been removed to North America found, in the stirring words of Ezekiel, great cause for hope. They translated that imagery into a song. The song, in turn, could help them walk as human beings in the cotton fields of oppression. They understood the experience of Ezekiel's people. The Israelites of old, Ezekiel's audience, were also a people enslaved by foreign masters. They had been forcibly removed from their native land into exile. They were far from their beloved home, compelled to toil in the service of a conquering empire. Though alive, they felt like they were dead. They were a people without hope. Like a nation of dry bones, they cried out in their misery as all oppressed people do. Israel cries out, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. It is no wonder that so many of us who follow the same three-year cycle of scripture readings were drawn to the Valley of Dry Bones this week. Not being able to gather together in person, in a church building, or anywhere else, we resonate with the exiles. Here in Idaho, we had our first recorded coronavirus deaths this past week. Though it's true that people continue to die by many other means, these specific deaths bring the worldwide pandemic closer to our doorsteps. We grieve for people who have died. And woven into all of this is a new kind of communal stress, a weight that we are sometimes aware of and sometimes not, but which has us saying things like, I have started regulating how much news I take in. Why do I need more sleep all of a sudden? I am sad for our world. We are all experiencing grief in real time, mourning the loss of life as we know it, mourning the loss of actual lives. 
We are also experiencing what is called anticipatory grief. Our body is anticipating grief for that which we'll, we will lose individually and communally. And all of that impacts our capacity for hope. So let's return to the prophet Ezekiel and his imaginative vision. It is, after all, a vision given for a people who have lost heart, who are suffering a death of the spirit, a living death in exile in a foreign land. Their temple has been destroyed, their holy city plundered, their leaders maimed and put in chains, their soldiers put to the sword, their young men and women either killed or dragged off into a foreign land. Ezekiel witnesses the soul of his people gradually wither and die, becoming as lifeless as a valley of dry bones. Ezekiel's vision begins when God transports the prophet by means of the Spirit and brings him to a valley. Pay attention to the role of the Spirit in this story. The valley is full of bones which have lain on the ground long enough to be stripped of their flesh and dried by the sun. A valley of dry bones, of dead warriors, is a shameful image. Bones left unattended, bones not gathered up and cared for by the family were disgraced. God asks the prophet if the bones can be made to live again. His response is the only line of his own in the story, the only line in which he breaks from narrating and speaks his mind. O oh Lord God, you know, he replies. Ezekiel knows that only God can answer the question. Ezekiel prophesied, and the bones began to array themselves with flesh. There was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then the wind spirit enters the bones and supplies the life breath that reanimates them. Bones and sinews were repaired. But the work is not complete without the Spirit of God, God's breath which gives life, as it did at the beginning of creation when God breathed into the first human being. God will give the house of Israel a new heart and a new spirit. Israel's heart has become like stone, like bones dried up, and God will replace it with one of flesh. The restoration of Israel will be like the bones, not complete until God's Spirit enters in and generates faithful obedience. There is breath and new creation for the Israelites. Ezekiel prophesies to the breath, and the slain bodies lived and stood on their feet. We know that the pieces never get put back together in the same way. God's people are going back to the land of Israel, back to their own soil eventually, but their relationship with God is changed. And our lives will be changed too when we come back together again. But we shall, like the Israelites, be able to still declare, you shall know that I am the Lord. You shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, God says. This vision reminds every generation that God not only gives life, but restores life. This vision reminds every generation that death will not have the last word, even when all signs of life have been taken away. The vision reminds every generation that God is the creator of life. Our call then is to welcome God's breath of life. A change occurs. It is our responsibility to tune our senses to how the Spirit is and could be working in our community and world, even during an international pandemic. Restoration of life for Israel was not simply a return to a corrected state of pre-exilic life. Ezekiel's prophecy was restoration to the knowledge of and the trust in God. But this knowledge and trust were not former things. Israel would know God's faithfulness to God's promises in a new way, which creates a new life. The Valley of Dry Bones illuminates God's actions, God's heart, and God's transforming death into life. In our Gospel passage this morning, we hear that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. When I hear that God has the power to bring Lazarus back to life, when I hear that God has the power to breathe life into skeletons in the desert, I know that God has the power to breathe life into our valley. This year, my Lenten devotional has been Luke Powery's book, Were You There? Lenten Reflections on the Spirituals. We had no idea on Ash Wednesday that we would be sheltering in place on this fifth Sunday in Lent. 
When I started reading devotions based on the spirituals, I had no idea how deeply they would resonate with our current circumstances. I do not want to equate the pandemic with the institution of slavery. At the same time, I do believe that we can learn something powerful about suffering and faith and hope from the people who wrote and sang those spirituals. In his preface to the book, Powery writes, Suffering is always present, like the paparazzi. It seems to stalk its human prey. Suffering is a part of the broken, sin-sick world. And if there is a theo-musical genre that reminds us of this, it is the spirituals. They are musical memorabilia created on the anvil of misery by enslaved blacks. They are sorrow songs. They are suffering songs. However, to sing can be a sting to the reality of suffering. It can be a sign of hope and the presence of God in the midst of agony. This is why they are called spirituals, because they are the Spirit's song, and the Spirit will not be stopped and will blow through every season of life, even liturgical seasons like Lent. May we trust this day that the Spirit of God will not be stopped in the Treasure Valley, in our state, and around the world. God's Spirit breath has been creating new life since the dawn of creation. There is every reason to believe that the Spirit's work will continue. New life will come forth. In this particular moment, we may need to take a cue from those who compose the spirituals. We may need to be singing sorrow songs. Even so, we can trust that the Spirit is working through our sorrow. As Powery says, to sing can be a sting to the reality of suffering. So let our songs be signs of hope and witnesses to God's love in our lives. Amen. Our hymn of the day is The Glory of These Forty Days. 320 will sing verses 1, 2, and 4. prayers of intercession this morning. With the whole people of God, our Creator, in the name of Jesus Christ, let us pray for the Church, those in need, and all of creation. Let us pray for the Church Universal, its ministry to all of creation, and the mission of the Gospel to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
for the well-being of your creation, for rain, for sunshine, for the life-giving water and nutrients you provide that helps creation bloom and thrive. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For peace and justice around the world to all people, especially those that suffer from economic disadvantages, political abuse and corruption, famine and war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in authority, that they will remember the weak and make decisions that will serve the least among us and not their own political and economic self-interests. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the poor, oppressed, sick, bereaved, and lonely, lift them up and comfort them. Bring them wholeness and abundant life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, uplift them and give them strength to live in dignity. Give them a sense of well-being and joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this congregation, that we will see the glory of your creation and experience love from those around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you are the giver of life to all things. We ask for guidance, compassion, love, and healing for all of your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for your saints. Join us together with them as your children in this world and the next. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. According to your steadfast love, O oh God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to take a moment. Um, even though we are not meeting together in person, please know that our mission and ministry continue and need your support. Take this time to share your gifts via online bill pay or snail mail. Reach out to us or your neighbor. Take care of one another. Our hymn is um, verse, the Lent verse of Tree of Life and Awesome Mystery. Sunday of the month and what that means at Trinity is that we have a noisy offering and this week our um, noisy offering is for a new pro program that we have never supported before one that's just gotten off the ground this year uh, the Nampa bicycle project so we did have some coins brought in and we I know that there are some checks waiting so here we go okay Thank you, friends, for your generosity and um, remembering us. Uh, receive the blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending song is, What Wondrous Love Is This? We'll sing verses 1, 3, and 4.
Thanks be to God.